Epping, New Hampshire, a picturesque small town known for its historic architecture, sprawling farms, and friendly neighbors. But even small towns hide big secrets. Or maybe not so secret. She's literally burning a body in her front yard. Yes. On a public roadway. Yes, yes. Just whose remains are burning in that front yard fire pit? And is the woman who lives here a gold digger or a grave digger? It all begins when the city of Epping's population of nearly 7,000 increases by one. Her name is Sheila Jennings. Who is Sheila? Uh, her nickname growing up was uh, Firecracker because she was born on July 4th. And that's a nickname that suited her personality. And this beautiful young woman was looking to strike gold. What are the circumstances that brought Sheila to Epping, New Hampshire? Sheila answered a personal ad. Uh, from Dr. Wilfred Labar. Dr. Wilfred Labar is a prominent chiropractor who is well liked in his community and rich. He owns one of the largest and most sought after pieces of real estate in the area, a 115 acre horse farm. Looked like he was kind of living his dream on the farm. The only thing Dr. Labar is missing is companionship. Sheila Jennings, who is 34 years younger, is more than happy to fill that void. And does she ever? Sheila offers up affection, adoration, and sexy nude photo shoots. The doctor is in. I think that, you know, that he just got swept up by her youth and by her beauty and invited her into his life and then she took it over. In no time, Sheila moves into the farmhouse and makes herself right at home. She demands that everyone around town call her Mrs. Labar. Sheila and the doctor were not married. Legally, uh, no, no. But she said she was married to him. Yes. But seems as though Sheila wants more than the good doctor's name. Reporter turned author Kevin Flynn says Sheila was ready to fight for what was his. Sheila had power of attorney over Dr. Lavar, even though they were never married. They did not have a legal marriage. They had a common law marriage, but he never gave her his name. She just took it. And eventually, she took everything Dr. Labar owned when he suddenly and mysteriously passes away of a heart attack. Sheila Labar is now rich and single and ready to mingle. And it doesn't take her long before she meets Kenneth County on a dating site. He's half Sheila's age. They drank and they ended up having sex in her car at her house in Epping. She does everything she can to isolate him from his parents and, and is successful in doing that. When Kenneth's mother hasn't heard from her son in weeks, she files the missing persons report with the authorities in Massachusetts. You know, kind of looked at the bulletin and it said, this gentleman's missing, was picked up by a woman with an S first name from New Hampshire driving a black Cadillac. This is Sheila's home up to the left. So we drive down there, bang on the door, Kenny came out, he was fine and you know, he wanted to be there. So as far as missing persons go, he's an adult and he's found. Kenneth's mother receives the news that her son has been located, but she is hardly relieved. Her son is developmentally disabled with the IQ of a 12-year-old, but authorities' hands are tied since Kenneth is legally an adult. And then at some point, you run into him again at the Walmart. Yes, yep. Things are a little different at that point, though. They are. He has some bruising. He looks a little bit ashen in color, and he's in a Walmart wheelchair. And I asked him several times, um, you know, if he was okay and uh, if everything was all right. And he refused to talk to us. On their way out, detectives take note of Sheila's purchase, several empty gas containers. She's stacking them on Kenneth as he sits in the wheelchair. Just five days later, Detective Gallagher receives a bizarre phone call from Sheila. She said um, that she wanted us to know that that's, that Kenny left um, and she wanted that he was a pedophile and she was going to play a tape for me that would prove he was a pedophile. What did you say to that? I told her to play the tape. And then I heard Sheila say, um, why are you throwing up? Stop throwing up. And I didn't hear Kenneth talking anymore. But then I heard her say, um, 
Why are you passing out? Why did you pass out? Detective Gallagher doesn't know what to make of the disturbing recording, but when Kenneth's mother confirms that her son has not returned home, he knows something horrific is going on at the Labar farmhouse. It's probably around six o'clock at night, so it's dusk. Uh, we showed up, there was a burn pile. I kind of moved it a little bit, and I looked down and I saw a piece of flesh. There was a, a, a bone. If I had to make a guess, I would say it was um, maybe an, an upper arm and, and shoulder area. When you saw that, was that a game changer for you? Absolutely, yeah. The detectives have seen enough. We went up to the house, and as soon as I kicked the door and it opened up, we heard a woman's voice yell from the, the driveway. It was Sheila. Surprisingly, Sheila allows detectives inside the house. Kenneth isn't there, and the once beautiful home of Dr. Wilfred Labar is in ruins. The house is filthy. Um, there's rabbits running around everywhere. It stinks. Uh, there's rotten food in the sink. I see that there's a pair of his shoes. And I said, well, there's his shoes. You know, and she said, well, you know, those are his shoes. I bought him new shoes. And I knew she had because I saw him in a brand new pair of shoes. And later on, we get to the basement, and she opens the basement door, and there are the new shoes at the bottom of the basement. So I said, well, there's his new shoes, there's his old shoes, what's he wearing? And she couldn't explain it. Before they can question Sheila about the flesh and bones in the burn pile, she asks them to get off her property. Without a search warrant, they have no choice but to leave. We were not happy. We both knew that there was more to the story than this, and we both had a belief at that point in time that what we saw in the burn pile may be the remains of Kenneth County. The next morning, detectives are back with a search warrant. She was um, covered in ashes because she had been uh, kneeling by the burn pile that we had seen the night before, and she was sifting through it. Did she remove that bone and that piece of flesh? We never found the bone that, that um, myself and Rich Cody originally saw. And despite Sheila's efforts to clean up the burn pile, authorities recover several tiny bone fragments which appear to be human. The house, barn, and 115 acres of horse farm is now an official crime scene, making it the largest in New Hampshire state history. Hundreds of state police, local police, and the major crime unit swarm the property. And that would be the entryway into the residence. Inside, no longer a farmhouse, now a madhouse. Investigators find hundreds of rabbits running wild in the house and what appears to be human blood spatter in multiple rooms. There was no seat or anything on the toilet. But when crime scene investigators flush the septic system, they make a discovery, a birth certificate. The name on the birth certificate is Michael DeLonge. Sheila Labar, a resident of Epi, New Hampshire, is suspected by authorities to have killed her live-in lover, Kenneth County, and burned his remains in a fire pit in her front yard. Are you thinking it's a body at this point? Yeah. You are. I'm thinking it's a piece of a body. After a search of Sheila's farmhouse, they find bones they believe belong to Sheila's missing boyfriend, Kenneth County. But there's more to this macabre mystery, much more. Authorities also discover a birth certificate for another man clogging the toilet. His name is Michael DeLonge. She had flushed down the toilet his birth certificate and some other evidence. That's how we even knew about Mike DeLonge, because there was no report about him missing. And they began to say, who is Mike DeLonge? There are no reports of Mike DeLonge missing because no one knew he was missing. Michael is estranged from his family and staying at a homeless shelter at the time he meets Sheila. Here's a guy who's down on his luck. This woman comes along and says, you know, my husband died. I have this big farm. I need someone to help me take care of it. And they come over and they have sex and there's food on the table. And it's like, you know, why would I go back to a homeless shelter? Now, police wonder if more bodies will be discovered on this 115-acre horse ranch and if they have a serial killer on their hands. You know, you tend to think of that being as a small town. What does that mean, a small town, where everybody knows 
what everybody else is up to, everybody's watching everybody. So you would think that people couldn't just come to a farm like this and disappear. Eyewitnesses start to come forward, placing Michael Delage at the Labar Horse Ranch. The most telling story is that when Michael was living here, in the middle of winter, people saw Michael stumble down this long road in the middle of snow, bleeding from the forehead. And when somebody stopped to ask him what happened, he just kept on going, just said one word, he said, Sheila. While police wait on DNA results to come in, Sheila remains a free woman. Where was she during that time? She was supposed to be under watch by somebody, I don't know who, someone was supposed to be following her, and she somehow got away, and she ended up down in Massachusetts. Sheila dyes her hair bright red, withdraws thousands in cash, and packs up her most prized possessions. Sheila left with, of all things, her bunnies. While on the run, DNA results from the fire pit come in. The remains belong to Kenneth County. Sheila is charged with murder. Now police just need to find her. To know that there's a murderer that has now slipped away from us and we don't know where she is. And she's, she's not scared to carry a weapon. She's carried guns. Now, 30 miles away in Manchester, Sheila realizes she may need to unload her precious cargo. She stops by a pet store and asks people inside if they would watch her bunnies for a couple of days. The people agree and even invite Sheila to stay with them for the night. And it was at that time when they were in this, this people's living room and playing with the rabbits, the 11 o'clock news comes on and there's the story about a man missing in Epping. Sheila's cover is blown. She's arrested and extradited back to New Hampshire, where she is grilled by the cops. Then, traces of DNA evidence are recovered from inside the farmhouse. It's Michael Delage. His body was never recovered. Uh, it's fair to assume that, that she did the same thing to his body that she did to Kenneth County's body. Now, Sheila officially faces two counts of murder. Then Sheila shocks the court. She admits to killing both victims. But just listen to her justification. It's a wannabe Dexter defense. Sheila claims she's killed Kenneth and Michael, claiming they were pedophiles and deserved to die. She even recorded these so-called confessions. And there's a video actually of, 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 of Mike Delage that she shot. We played it for the jury where she's you know, trying to get him to admit that he was a pedophile uh, and did horrible things. There, are, there were audio recordings with Kenneth County where she was trying to force him to admit that he did all kinds of horrible things. Sheila's defense team says their client was insane at the time of the killings. She felt like she was this avenging angel, that she is there to be a protector, a champion for victims, um, without realizing the irony that she is victimizing people. After five weeks of testimony, she is found guilty on two counts of murder. What the defense offered was just psychobabble about her, uh, her, her mental state. It was calculated and it was deliberate and, and it was horrific. Sheila Labar is now serving two life sentences without the possibility of parole. In my opinion, she is a violent predator. She's a black widow. Who, uh, who really preyed on vulnerable men, got the torture and the violence and the abuse at her hands was it's just unspeakable. And what happened in this house of horrors in the small town of Epping won't soon be forgotten. People started realizing that even in a small town where everything is nice and beautiful and everyone knows each other that we can still have a horror going on in someone's home that you don't know about. But there's one last question. Is Sheila a serial killer? Not yet. She need one more victim to be a serial killer. However, this case may not be over. Months after Sheila Labar is locked away, police find a set of toes near the horse ranch barn. And they don't belong to Kenneth County or Michael Deloge. Do you think there are other victims out there? Yes. If she met a homeless guy in New York City and took him home and killed him, we would never know. She was using every and all means of disposal. But you definitely believe there are other victims out there? Yes. 
As for the question if Sheila Labar has more victims, the lead prosecutor in the case says that was always a concern. That's because during the investigation, several people came forward to say they knew other men who had stayed at the house. Officers also found hundreds of hours of audio cassettes of her speaking to men on chat lines.